we're trying to find the, how do you say, the, the, the evolution theory. And uh, during almost 40 years, it was like a big success until the moment in which they discovered that it was like a very, uh, very poor copy of, of that uh, uh, remain. And now there is a theory in which Conan Doyle maybe was the, the, the responsible of that hoax. In the, in the book of the, the Lost World, apparently you can find some clues in which he confessed that it was a kind of uh, revenge against the, the science community. If we're following certain ways of finding who is the guilty of a certain crime, then we remember Antonioni. This is a scene of his film, The Passenger. The Passenger, the passenger is the moment where there's like this guy who, who is uh, uh, Jack Nicholson who bumps into a dead body in a hotel and he decides to take the place of the, of the dead guy. And he's involved into a, an international plot of spies. But in fact, what is happening is that uh, Antonioni was taking all the, all the way back into, into his own stories, certain kind of, of, mir of mirror images that he's been following through. By example, blow up. Blow up with uh, Antonioni is the story of this kind of photographer who's taking photographs in a park, certain evidence, and suddenly he realizes that he, see, he was able to see a crime. He's unnoticedly, he's witness of something that is terrible. And he just realized this thing when he made like the development of the, of the role. So in here, we have Larraine. Larraine is a very close friend of Julio Cortazar. Julio Cortazar uh, heard was once with his, with his friend Larraine, a Chilean photographer living in Paris, and Larraine told him a story. And he told him, you know, I was like in Sacre Cor and suddenly I took a photograph and I realized that I took a crime. I was, in, in my photograph, there was the only evidence of such a crime. Cortaza realized that that was such a great story and then he created another one, another story. This story, it's the devil's rule. The devil's rule, this is a story in which he realizes that someone is connecting something with a crime because he sees something just in front of his eyes. Antonioni hears this story and realizes that that's a very nice, nice, nice plot to create blow up. And then later he created uh, uh, the passenger. So in here we have the moment where Antonioni is taking, in fact, the place of Larraine. Larraine is like the dead guy of all these stories and the guy who is following the whole plot is Antonioni. Each of these images are kind of um, resolved crime for Eric and me. It's a kind of a small mystery that, that we resolve. And acknowledge it, it's a moment in a play in, in which the character makes a critical discovery. This is one of the most classical representations of an, an acknowledge. Here you can see Odysseus arriving to Ithaca, uh, dressed as, as a beggar, and being discovered by, by his dog, Argo. This, this image is connected with this one, and it's a, a legend say that Freud had a, a mouth uh, cancer, and uh, he was like fighting a guy against him for several years, and he decided to stop fighting in the moment in which um, his dog, Jopi, um, gave him a, a clue about, about, about his situation. Apparently he, he called him, he, he came, and because the, the bad smell of, of, of his mouth, he, he, he ran out. And, and the, day, the day after, he died. There is this, this image that comes around sometimes. Uh, Abi Warhol was all his life looking for this idea. There's certain images that keep 
their own life. There are certain images that can flow through culture. It is, it is something that, that Warburg uh, called the pathosformal. The pathosformal is such an image that can cross almost anything. Something that can just you can recognize no matter which time you are in. For example, we have in here uh, a, a scene of Ariadne. Ariadne is like this classical figure of the of classical painting. In here we have a, a, a version that is made up by by uh, Jorge Avina. Jorge Avina is a guy who made all these drawings. Jorge Vigne is really important for uh, Mexican culture because he is maybe one of like the few guys who is able to create a pathos form. It, that is to say, he was the only person who was able to create a form that can be recognized not without the, the form itself. He was the one who was making the cover of this very cheap uh, comic that's called Libro Vaquero. A Libro Vaquero is like this, 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 this comic, this, this very popular, cheap magazine that uh, uh, told the stories about like the West, like the, the Lone Rangers, Cowboys, Indians, and, uh, and o o evidently the, the, the lady in distress. But there was a moment that uh, Playboy arrived into Mexico. So the, the magazine was in danger because of course if you, if you have to buy a Playboy or a cheap magazine, you will go into play. So what he decided to do is to change the figure itself of the woman depicted into the comic, and he started to make like nudes into the comic. He's the guy who created this type of nudes, and he started like creating something that you can recognize no matter which cover you are seeing. The pathos formal of the naked, desirable woman, he's the one who created such a thing. He's one of the few persons that we know that he's able because just because he was making this thing for 40 years. In here, uh, we ask him to make the Titian uh, painting, uh, which is the moment in which Ariadna is visited by the golden shower of, of Zeus and is trying to, to seduce her. In the, in the background, you see like the, 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 the father who is trying to protect her from Zeus, but now in here, with the scenery and the whole imagery of the West. During the creation of all this net of information, at what moment we we felt that we were creating all those all these links? But uh, actually, the links uh, were there, there already, and we were just like trying to catch all of them, and each drawing represents that gap in between the, that information. This image is, uh, you can see all the members of Pink Floyd, dressed as, as the characters of Wizard of, God, of Oz, which is one of our ways of understanding what's happening around here. It's a, a, a apophenia phenomenon which is a, um, um, a moment in which you can recognize patterns or meaningful patterns in between, in between things. If you uh, put together the, the album of the Dark, Sh the, uh, Dark Side of the, of the Moon of Pink Floyd and the Wizard of Oz, you can recognize some moments in which they really conceive. There is this character that's called Fantomas. Fantomas is like a very, very ancient character of comics dated from the beginning of the century. It's a French comic character, and it's like a, it's a criminal. His power is the one of taking the place of someone else. That's his, his power. And uh, after some years of like having like some, some comics in Belgium, some comics in France. In the 60s, there was this guy, Gonzalo Martre. Gonzalo Martre is depicted over here. Gonzalo Martre is the one who recollected the idea of Fantomas, and he turned this comic into an American, Latin American hero. This is the way it's depicted in the 60s, and he's like the guy who is defending the revolution in Latin America, trying to uh, show 
that the, the whole organization of political concerns and institution, basically, it's a, it's a, it's a whole mess, and it's, and it's not worth of, of taking in consideration, but the social uh, uh, struggle. There's, so, uh, Gonzalo Martre started to make one very strange thing in, the, in his comic. He started inviting living people into his comics. One of these characters was Julio Cortázar. Cortázar was taken into the comic, and there's this editor who saw this comic, because there was also cheap publications rolling around, and uh, uh, he sent, he was close friend of Cortázar, he sent from Mexico this comic into, into Buenos Aires. Cortázar received this comic and he realized that he was part of a comic. So he says like, okay, well if no one asks me about this thing, I will answer back with another comic. So he created this other one. It's a comic, a very class, a very, very famous comic, which is called Fantomas Against the Multinational Vampires. And basically it's the fight of uh, Fantomas against a conspiration of bad guys trying to get rid of all the culture in the, in the, in the universe, trying to burn all the libraries. So Cortázar created this because he was part of a jury, of a trial that was taking part in, in, in that moment in Switzerland. This trial is called the Russell Tribunal, and uh, it was Bertrand Russell who created this tribunal, and it was in, in, because he thought that there, is, uh, uh, there was no jury capable of, ju of judging uh, uh, the invasion into, into Korea and later the invasion into, into Vietnam. So Cortázar just left the tribunal of Russell and he realized that he had very, very interesting information. He created this scum. So then again, it was the, the himself taking part of a plot that was taking part as a character and who was taking part of someone who didn't know nothing about it. But in the end, we realized that it was like a very interesting point of departure. So we contact uh, uh, Gonzalo Martre. He's a very old uh, uh, writer, he's 84 years old, and we convinced him to write like a new plot to, 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 to take uh, Fantomas back into life. Por